I'm Dr. Mike Milligan. We are here at the American Academy for Oral Systemic Health fifth annual scientific session. Our introductory keynote speaker was Dr. Kenneth Cooper, father of aerobics and founder of the Cooper Clinic here in Dallas, Texas. Dr. Cooper, thanks so much for being with us. My pleasure. So Dr. Cooper, what would be the top eight things that someone could do to get healthier? We call that being Cooperized. Mm -hmm. Number one, body weight. Mm -hmm. Your body mass index should be under 25. Okay. It'd be hard to calculate. Mm -hmm. But just think of what was your weight at age 21. Mm -hmm. That gives you an idea of what your weight should be. Number two is to get at least five to nine servings of fruits and vegetables every day. Average American adult gets 3.1. Average American teenager gets 1.7. Number three is supplementation. Mm -hmm. I'm a strong believer in supplementation. My father practiced dentist for 50 years. Recommended right. that years ago. Yes. Proper nutrition, proper supplementation. We want you to get at least uh, uh, 2,000 units of vitamin D3 per day. We want you to get at least a gram of omega-3 twice a day. Others you may need, but those two we have undeniable data to show the benefit, mm -hmm. reducing decimal causes, prolonging life. It's amazing what we're showing with vitamin D deficiencies and omega-3 deficiencies. Okay. Next, you must get 30 minutes of exercise most days per week, mm -hmm. either collectively or sustained. We know that. Okay. Number four, you shouldn't Next one is that you shouldn't use tobacco in any form. That's number five. And number six, if you drink, I don't drink at all, but if you drink, limit your beverage alcohol intake to no more than six drinks a week for women or ten drinks a week for men. Okay. But you can't really drink safely. We know that exercise or that alcohol in minimal amounts, particularly wine, may actually reduce the frequency of heart disease, apparently by increasing the HDL cholesterol. Mm -hmm. So a little bit may help. Uh -huh. But I don't recommend any alcohol because, you know, even minimal alcohol increases the risk of cancer. A study from Harvard School of Public Health showed that women who consume more than six drinks per week, a drinks, a can or glass of beer, mm -hmm. glass of wine, or a cocktail, more than six per week, there was a 26% increased risk of breast cancer. So you can use alcohol, really, if you want to be involved in a total preventive medicine program. And then finally, we have stress management. Control the stress physiologically, that's number seven, by meditation, by exercise. Uh, biofeedback, all these things can be used. I don't recommend medications for that. Mm -hmm. And that's the last resort we use. And then number eight, be sure to get a good examination on a regular basis. Now, if you can't get the expensive type of examination we do here, but you can do something on your own with your own, own position, get your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. If it's 140 over 90, you need to get it under control. Right. And the vast majority of blood pressure we can control with some dietary recommendations and exercise. We see that. Mm -hmm. So get your, get, your butt, get your height and weight to get your body mass index. Get your blood pressure and get a fasting blood sugar and a fasting blood cholesterol level. It costs you about $15. And those are the things we die of. Mm -hmm. So we've shown in our research that following 76,000 men and women for a period of 20 years, if you get cooperized, the average life expectancy of our men, 87.5 years. 87.5. Uh, 87 our women, 90.5. And that's 10 years beyond the national average. Mm -hmm. So we're proven without question. We've been research, doing research here for 45 years. Mm -hmm. Our database is 120,000 patients. So we have enough data now to prove what I'm saying. The value of exercise, the practice of medicine. And if we say now, exercise is medicine. And not only the length of their life, but dramatically improve the quality of their life. I ask people all the time. The exercise for a year. What most motivates you to continue exercise? Because it makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. I've had people tell me, I wish I'd known this 20 years ago. I thought I felt good then. But I'm enjoying quality of life so much better now, I never realized I could do that. Right. I, challenge, I challenge you, if you aren't involved in an exercise program, just try that. I think the first thing you'll notice is improving the quality of your life. You feel so much better. Mm -hmm. People less depressed, less hypochondriac, improved self-image, and much more positive attitude towards life, and fewer somatic complaints. That's what we've shown, being physically fit. Wonderful. Dr. Cooper, uh, you're speaking here at, at primarily a dental meeting to many dentists. What, is the, uh, what recommendations would you have to the public as far as dentistry? Why is it important? Your father was a periodontist. Why is, it, why is dentistry important to their overall health? Well, it is. As my father practiced periodontist for many, many years and also strongly recommended vitamin supplementation and proper diet, mm -hmm. particularly truly sugar in the diet. But he said back in those days, you can look at the gums of a person and predict heart disease. Because right. those tissues work together. Inflammation of the mouth, inflammation of the heart. So I think it's very important to dentists to realize that they can help the person as far as heart disease by just looking at their mouth. Mm -hmm. So they sold this transition now. Preventive medicine has been, or preventive dentistry has been a factor many, many years, long before preventive medicine mm -hmm. was a factor in medicine. Right. In fact, I started my practice here some right. 45 years ago. I didn't have any patients because preventive medicine was a Cinderella the medical specialty because there's no profit in health. 
That's what I saw back in the 50s in medical school. I had to start from scratch. But the reason has been successful. Over these last uh, 50, 45 years, we have two more offices, two employees. A uh, little two more offices. Now we have 30 acres saved. We have 650 employees. We have 20 positions working for us. We're highly successful. Right. Right. I had to borrow 2000 a month the first two months, first six months. I even paid, paid my employees. It was so bad. But we've gone to that great extent. Why? I'm very strong in my beliefs. Mm -hmm. And number one, divine intervention. Over these last 45 years, there have been so many times I would have had to make a decision. I want to go this way, for some reason I went that way. If I had gone that way, I wouldn't be here today. Went through back, bankruptcy once, 88 to 91, and start from scratch again. Somebody up there has been guiding me and helping me along the way. Mm -hmm. Happy to say that went through bankruptcy, 88 to 91, but then by 2004, we burned the mortgage on the aerobic center. That was God, oh my. all the way, right. divine right. intervention. Right. So number two is have a fantastic staff. That's true in industries, too. Mm -hmm. The quality of your staff is going to make you successful. Mm -hmm. The quality of the, the staff, good staff of any CEO is going to determine whether he's a good, what he has for results. I get lots of awards all over the world. In fact, my staff accused me trying to get the number of awards to match my age. But I get them all over the world. But I hasten to say, I don't deserve this award. My staff deserves this award. Number three on that list is that it's a whole lot cheaper, more effective to maintain good health than regain it once it's lost. And we've proved that with our studies now, as I told you today. Mm -hmm. And then number four, if people realize they have a need, you provide a service, get the results they want, they'll make you successful in any field, in my field, in dentistry, whatever. Mm -hmm. That's great for dentists. What about the public? What should the public know? Why should they get their mouth healthy in order to be healthy throughout their entire body? We have this very sensitive questionnaire. We give our patients that come through. Mm -hmm. And one thing we ask, when was your last dental examination? Because okay. we do feel that you can't really be totally healthy if your mouth is a mess. Right. And it correlates to so many conditions. Chronic infl inflammation there may be causing inflammation in coronary arteries, it cause arthritis, it cause all sorts of things. So if you've got a lousy mouth, Mm -hmm. I, I see some very successful men and women, particularly mm -hmm. men who come to my clinic, mm -hmm. they have a terrible mouth. Mm -hmm. They're trying to, they aren't taking care of their body at all. Right. So many of these people too are smoking, they're chewing, whatever it may be. But I would encourage dentists to do what we do at our clinic, have a dentist full time on our staff, and he not only, not only does an oral examination, but he actually visualizes and photographs the vocal cords, mm -hmm. the open and closed position. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised, the number of nodules we find, but at least we find the vocal cords, that's being missed by, mm -hmm. and it's probably missed by both physicians. They aren't doing that type of examination. Right, right. Is there anything else you'd like to tell our viewers before we close, Dr. Cooper? Well, I think it's uh, exciting to be here today because what you're promoting now with this organization is something I've been teaching and preaching for 50 years. One thing I'd like to add, too, before I finish, is I told you in the presentation this morning that I was going to the typical American male, athlete in high school and college, got obese in medical school, gained about 40 pounds. After I got out of medical school, and then I, uh, had to, I had that really ex almost well, nearly a fatal experience at 29 years of age. Mm -hmm. So it forced me back to change in my lifestyle. I lost weight in six months from a marathon, first marathon a year later. But the important point, we had 106 members of our graduating class. There was only 20 of us left. Oh my. I'm convinced right. that those guys had the same experience. We all gained weight. Right. Obese was coming out of place mm -hmm. of stress. We, they were smoking back in those days, all these things, no exercise, and they died. Mm -hmm. If I hadn't changed my life at age 29, I wouldn't be here today. Right. Right, right. Dr. Cooper, thank you so much for all you've done and for visiting with us here today. Thank you. Thank you.